Hi, this is Dr. Raj Singh. I practice at Healer Primary Care and Seven Heart Medical Spa in Las Vegas. Today's topic of discussion is vitamin D and its effects on health. Now, our understanding of vitamin D and its role on health has evolved significantly. Still, there are multiple conflicting guidelines and recommendations. In today's video, we are going to dive deep into vitamin D and learn everything about it. So let's get started. So first of all, what is vitamin D? It's also called as calciferol. It's fat soluble and we get it primarily through food and through sunlight. Now, although it is called a vitamin, vitamin D in fact is more closer to a pro-hormone because it has a steroid based structure and it acts on multiple receptors throughout the body to exert its effect. Now, although vitamin D is abundant in nature, almost 50% of the world's population is considered vitamin D deficient. Types of vitamin D. So there are natural analogs which are vitamin D1 through D5. We'll be focusing primarily on D2 which is called argocalciferol which is plant-based and D3 or cholecalciferol which is present in animal-based food. Now the synthetic analogs are also available however they are available by prescription only and primarily used to treat psoriasis and bone disease in kidney patients. Sources. Now, the richest source of vitamin D3 would be foods such as, you know, fatty foods, cod liver oil, egg yolk, beef. Mushrooms are the only plant-based source that are very rich in vitamin D. Now, certain growers will actually expose mushrooms to UV light to increase the concentration of vitamin D. So, you can see in this picture, sunlight converts argosterol in mushrooms to vitamin D2 or argocalciferol. Now, aside from food, the best source of vitamin D are sunlight and, of course, supplementation. One of the major causes of deficiency is lack of exposure to sunlight because you know we're spending most of our life indoors these days and we often wear sunscreen when we are outside. Wearing a sunscreen with the SPF of 30 or higher can reduce vitamin D synthesis in the skin by more than 95%. If you have a darker skin, of course, you are going to be more likely deficient and you need more sun exposure. Approximately 20 minutes of direct sunlight about four times a week is considered adequate. If you are in a very polluted area, you will need more vitamin D because pollution does block UV light. Now, certain countries where full body clothing is worn will also have increased uh, deficiency of vitamin D. Now, once we do absorb it, it's packed into small molecules called chylomicrons, which are absorbed into the lymphatic system and then enter the liver via portal way. Chylomicrons are these uh, molecules which are made of cholesterol, triglycerides, and phospholipids. So you can see in this picture the structure. Now since we need fat containing chylomicrons to transport vitamin D to the liver, any disorder that is associated with fat malabsorption, you know, celiac disease, Crohn's, cystic fibrosis, cholestatic liver disease, they all will be associated with low levels of vitamin D or vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D is stored in our liver and in the fat tissue and can be used by the body on an as needed basis. Now, theoretically, vitamin D is inactive, so it has to be activated first. Initially, it goes to the liver and then goes to the kidney before our body can use it. So, any patient with liver disease or kidney problems will have low levels of vitamin D. Now, what causes deficiency? So, many things. Unbalanced diet, limited exposure to sun, dark skin. If you're overweight, especially with a BMI more than 30, liver or kidney problems, certain medications such as phenytoin, weight loss surgery, uh, we covered the uh, uh, inflammatory bowel disease before, strictly vegan diet, you know, no eggs, for example. What are some of the functions? Now, traditionally, we always thought vitamin D, you know, equals bone health, but it actually has many other functions. If you have deficiency in vitamin D, there's increased risk of osteoporosis and osteopenia, we know that. Also, poor muscle strength, increased fatigue, cramps in our legs, blood pressure goes up, and immune system issues. Now, patients with vitamin D deficiency are known to have increased risk of autoimmune diseases. Recent data also shows that patients who have vitamin D deficiency tend to have more severe lung disease if they catch COVID-19 infection. Of course, increased risk of Parkinson's disease, diabetes, increased inflammation. It can also lead to certain mutation which can increase risk of cancer risk because vitamin D does help in apoptosis, which is natural cell death. Urinary incontinence and some cases of bacterial vaginosis also have been reported in patients who are deficient in vitamin D. So as you can see, it serves many purposes other than just the bone that we initially thought it does. Certain issues we all need to be aware of. So first of all, vitamin D for best results always should be combined with calcium. If the calcium intake is inadequate, 
taking vitamin D actually can cause increased loss of bone. It also shows that if you take more than 5,000 units of vitamin D every single day, it can cause more side effects and can lead to worsening of bone disease. Too much vitamin D will cause calcification of blood vessels, among other problems. Increases of kidney stones, of course, if you're taking too much vitamin D. So there are issues to be aware of when it comes to vitamin D. What is considered an optimal level? So first of all, we can do a simple blood test to monitor levels of vitamin D. We always measure 25 hydroxy or 25 vitamin D because it has a longer half-life of about two weeks. So ideally you want a level between 50 to 75. Much higher level means more side effects. Now supplementing with 2,000 to 4,000 units per day may be needed to bring up the baseline value to an optimal range. Once the optimal level is achieved, then the dose needs to be reduced to about 600 to 800 units per day. Patients who are overweight, especially BMI more than 30, will need much higher doses. Alternatively, you can also take a tablespoon of cod liver oil every single day to supplement the vitamin D level. Negative effects. So just like, you know, too little is bad, taking too much is also bad. The liver is our usual storage site for vitamin D. So when you take too much vitamin D, the excess amount is going to be stored in liver and then the fat. Now once the fat becomes saturated, then you will start seeing toxic effects. So which will be from high calcium levels, confusion, lack of appetite, muscle weakness, long-term exposure will cause you know, kidney stone, bone loss and even pain in the bones. So to summarize everything, so vitamin D is very important first of all and serves many, many functions. Maintain level between 50 to 80 nanomoles per liter for best results. Take calcium along with vitamin D or at least have a good calcium diet. And you know you might need higher doses initially but after that you need to decrease the dose to minimize these side effects. So that's it for today. I hope that was helpful and you learned a little bit about vitamin D. If you did like the content please do not forget to like and subscribe. And uh, This is Dr. Raj Singh from Las Vegas. Take care. Bye-bye.